Hello and welcome to Linux for Beginners training. So because everyone needs fundamentals and this is the week one of eight or day one of our series. So ang topic natin ngayon is what is Linux and how to set up one. I know you're excited para malaman ano ba talagang Linux. Maybe you have um, an idea or nabasa mo na or ginagamit mo na yung Linux. But you don't know really where to begin. No? So, paano gumagalaw? Ano ang mga function yan? Bakit? Para saan ba yan? Okay? So, to make it short, um, I will teach you uh, the basics of Linux, ano yung mga structure, ano yung foundation, a little bit of history para mas strong ang knowledge mo. If you want to advance to Linux or if you're using it for just your own sake or for sa, sa company or you want to uh, gain another skill or um, maybe you're planning to get a cer uh, certification, that's really good. So, makinig lang tayo sa training na ito. So, I am uh, DJ Dadula, okay? I am a system administrator. Um, I was specifically a Linux system administrator, but now I'm a systems administrator, meaning hindi lang Linux, okay? So, uh, may Windows, meron ding uh, Mac. So, it depends upon the requirements ng company and uh, ng client, okay? And I'll be your trainer for this course. So, kung kilala mo ako, hello. <laughs> kung hindi pa, hello. I am DJ Dadala. I'm also a husband um, with uh, two kids, uh, both um, very young and cute. Okay. And um, in my pastime, uh, I do research and I do uh, blogging, of course, on my website sakuyadj.blogspot.com you can visit my website or um, you can email me or you can go to my page sa Kuya DJ sa Facebook and to make it short uh, tuturuan ko kayo ng basic and I hope you learn fast learn okay so our main objectives to move on sa train na to is breaking the wall have a beneficial foundation and opportunity to step up. Why breaking the wall? Siyempre, if you're on the wall and behind that, for example, it's a castle. <laughs> and behind that, it's a very big opportunity. Or a uh, malaking bahay. Or basta magandang part. Magandang bagay sa likod ng wall. And because I'm uh, relating this doon sa certification. Because sa Linux, uh, merong mga certifications din. And, kapag naghanap ka minsan ng information sa internet, or nagtanong ka sa friends mo, or sa senior mo, or sa professor mo, sinabi ng Linux, okay, it's very easy. Sabihin sa'yo, di ba? And, uh, search mo lang. And, kapag tinuhin ka sa mga courses, sa mga uh, outline, sa mga training videos, eh, parang advanced na advanced. You need to know the operating system. You need to know uh, at, at least na experience mo na. So, yung certification na yan, uh, I'm not saying na uh, hindi mo kaya. No? Kakayanin mo yan dahil simula din ako sa ganun. But if you're just uh, trying the sa first time pa lang, just a beginner. Just trying to learn. Kakabasa mo lang. Okay? Hindi mo alam pa paano simulan. So, gusto kong ma-break yung wall na yun para ma-reach mo yung intermediate to advanced na skill sa Linux. Siyempre, lahat naman nakisimula sa basic. But you need to break that wall at himahima yan para maging rockstar ka tulad ng penguin na yan. <laughs> okay? So, follow on. And have a beneficial foundation. Bakit? Dahil kapag nalaman mo ang Linux, I tell you, and 
nasaba ka sa real world. Okay? Pag may bilang may requirements at um, kailangan ng linong skill, step up ka. Okay? Magbe-benefit ka. Why? Hindi lang sa company, hindi lang sa requirements, kundi ikaw. Kung gusto mong mag-build ng sarili mong laboratory, gusto mong gumawa ng sarili system, kung alam ang foundation na ito, hindi ka mahirapan. And, kapag uh, hindi, kware, yung topic na yan o yung system na yan, is hindi ko naman na ituro dito, but you have the, the foundation, magbasa ka sa internet, magbasa ka ng mga how-to guides, like for example, gumawa ng uh, uh, email server or gumawa ka ng uh, uh, domain controller, pa nagbasa ka nun, hindi mo maintindihan na simula. But dito, maintindihan mo at kaya mong mag-navigate, kaya mong gumalaw, kaya mong isang type lang, alam mo yun? Ibig sabihin ko, isang type lang, kayang-kaya mo na. Okay? So, yun ang gusto ko, yun ang objective natin. And of course, opportunity to step up. Siguro, madaming competition sa company, madaming competition sa school, okay? Or sa mga uh, vendors dyan, mga support groups. Kapag marunong ka mag-Linux, it should be basic, actually. Like yun, sa mga, sa mga hiring, Tinitignan ko, ah, kailangan basic knowledge sa Linux. Ibig sabihin, it should be like Windows. Okay? Yung hindi mo na kailangan i-search. Paano ba to? Paano ba to? Ay, kailangan mag-change group. Okay, kailangan mag-change directory. Alam mo yan, search mo pa. So, kung alam mo to, like if you're planning to work abroad, diba, kailangan bihasa ka dito. Advantage. Meron kang advantage sa real world. No? Kasi because IT, di ba, mabilis yan. No? Mabilis ang palitan dyan. Mabilis ang information. So, dapat kaya mo ng mabilisan din. Okay? So, I hope this would help you uh, catch that dream. <laughs> o uh, mag-step up sa iyong uh, current position, sa iyong um, uh, desire na maging For example, system administrator also, or a consultant, or a, pro a programmer, developer, senior, senior, mga ganyan, di ba? So, it was my dream also. So, I'm just sharing you that uh, accomplishment, okay? So, ano bang topics natin sa week 1 na to? Unang-una, talakay natin ng Linux, okay? So, ano ba ang Linux? Anong simula ng Linux? Uh, ano ba yung word na Linux? Okay? And... Also, the Linux kernel, you'll uh, malalaman mo kung ano yung kernel and the open source philosophy. Siguro familiar ka dun sa open source na word. Okay? Siguro kung nagda-download ka, nag-install ka ng mga software, you know the open source. Or if a developer, of course, you should know uh, the open source. And kung sa operating system pa naman, you should know the kernel. So, ibigyan natin ang, ng relation ang Linux kernel and open source philosophy. And the major distributions, dahil sa Linux, madaming distributions. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Manalaman natin mamaya. Um, the major applications, uh, bakit? Para sa ban Linux? Is to run the applications, to run the system, to run a service. Okay? So, bakit ka may operating system? Because you need uh, a machine, a hardware, to run kung anong gusto mong system. Paano mo gagawin yun? Kailangan mo ng operating system. Kailangan mo ng applications. And basic software licensing. Oh, okay. Ang Linux, may licensing. Of course, may licensing. But you, need, you don't need to pay. Later on, malalaman mo yan. And installing VirtualBox o Windows. Ano yung VirtualBox? I'll explain later. Kung ano ba ang VirtualBox? It's a third-party software. And it's also free. Okay? So, dahil uh, ako, ginagamit ko ngayon is Windows. So, papakita ko paano mag-install ng Windows. If you're using already a Linux machine, uh, it's very easy. <laughs> Kung paano ako napag-install ng mga software dyan, eh, marunong ka dapat mag-install ng VirtualBox. And installing Linux using an image for VirtualBox. Bakit? Ang VirtualBox, dyan tayo gagawa ng yatawag na virtual machines. So, dyan mag ang iyong operating system. Any kind of operating system. But, for this, for this training, syempre, Linux ang gagamitin natin. 
and some reviews and exercises. So, hindi lang to uh, sa last part of exercises, you will see uh, yung mga exercises natin during the training. So, what is Linux? Just like Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 10, or 8, or 10, 11, and 20, <laughs> I don't know, and the Mac OS X, Linux is a operating system. Okay? What's the operating system? An operating system is the software that manages all of the hardware resources, yung mga peripherals, okay, yung mga input-output associated with your desktop or laptop or server or even your phone. Merong operating system, right? So, kung walang operating system, offered, uh, referred to as uh, um, OS, na, the software wouldn't function. So, paano magagalawin ng isang computer? Paano nag function ng isang computer kung walang operating system? Right? So, para saan? <laughs> Ang isang application kung walang operating system na garan? Hindi ka makakagawa ng isang software kung walang operating system. So, Linux is just like other operating system. Okay? I'm not saying that Linux lang, na Itong training na ito, hindi yan ang focus natin. Hindi yan ang ibig sabihin ng bakit ako nagkutuloy ng Linux. Bakit ko kailangan ng Linux? Kasi dapat Linux lang. No! You need Linux to run any types of software. Or you need another operating system to run the requirements of the application or a system. So, dapat broad ang iyong knowledge. But you need to learn the Linux, of, of course. Okay? So, alam natin na ang Linux is an operating system pala. Yan ang sabi ni Google. <laughs> okay? Pwede mong search yan. Madaming klaseng um, uh, uh, definition ng Linux. But, ito yung pinakamalapit. But, at pinaka-simple because it is an operating system. At ang gumawa niyan is si Linus, Linus Torvalds. Tara! <laughs> no. <laughs> Penguin lang yan. No? So, yan ang usual natin nakikita sa symbol ng Linux. But actually, yan si uh, Linus Torvalds. A very genius, no? College. College lang siya nun nang ginawa niya ang ang uh, Linux. At mamaya, mapakita ko sa inyo ang video um, ng history ng Linux. Okay? At ang subject natin, I see Linux Torvalds. Mamaya, you will see that history. Kernel versus OS. So, ano ba ang sabihin ng kernel? Ang sabihin ng OS or operating system. Sabi nila, ang kernel is an operating system. Tignan natin. The OS, or operating system, is comprised of a number of pieces. If you are an uh, engineering student or IT student, siguro nadaanan mo to. But if hindi pa, no, kung nag-shift ka lang ng career to IT, kailangan mo din malaman ito. Hindi lang nagbukas ko ng computer. Kailangan malaman, ano ba yung pieces na yun? Ano ba nag-run sa operating system? Papa nag ng operating system? So, Tignan natin. Unang-una ay bootloader. So, what is a bootloader? Kung nakita mo, di ba, pag bukas mo ng computer, meron ka nakitang startup sa screen mo. Nag-load ang madami yan, di ba? Kung ano, may mga keyboard, may hard disk, di ba? Nakikita mo yan. And then, boot screen. Nag-load yung Windows. O nag-load yung Linux. Or Mac. Okay? So, yun yung bootloader. Ano ginagawa ng bootloader? Nerode niya yung kailangan i-run sa simula pa lang bago dumating sa operating system. And, unang-una dun is yung kernel. Actually, una is an image. Okay? Sunod, is yung kernel. So, itong isang piece na to is the kernel. And, it's actually called the Linux. Sa Linux. Okay? So, akala ko ba ang Linux is operating system? Yes, it's an operating system, but actually, Linux is the kernel. So, I'll tackle yung kernel mamaya sa ibang slide.
Okay? So next is the daemons. So, ano yung daemons? Ito yung mga running services na necessary sa pag-run ng operating system. Okay? So, hindi ko kailangan pakabahin. But ito yung mga uh, nag-run behind the system. So, hindi mo siya nakikita. Pero actually, nakita mo yung desktop mo. Nag-click ka, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, may nag-run na service. So, wala kang magagawa. Hindi ka makakagalaw sa isang operating system kung wala nag-run na service. Service ng desktop manager, service ng clock, so madami yan, no? Okay? So, yun yung daemons. And sunod is the shell. Okay, what's the shell? Yan ba yung gasoline station? <laughs> no. <laughs> o yung sa beach? Okay? So, yung shell is an interpreter. Okay? Sibihin, kung anong gusto nung sabihin sa computer o sa Linux, is you need an interpreter. Bakit? Iba ang code, iba ang language ng machine. Remember? Ang language ng machine is, ano, 1 and 0. <laughs> and, translate siya sa mga code. Okay? Sa yung code na yun, siya yung, yung machine na nakakalam nun. Alam mo namang, uh, i- like kang mag-assembly language, or like kang uh, magko-code ng mga machine codes. Oh, mahirap yun, no? Pero, um, genius ka, <laughs> magagawa mo yun. But, sa Linux, it, need, it, it should be easy, di ba? So, paano ka makakapag-communicate sa, sa operating system kung, kung napaka-komplikado? So, meron interpreter. Okay? Si interpreter ang bahalang mag-command sa machine kapag sinabi ni user. So, next is the graphical server. So, paano, ka makaki- paano mo makikita yung laman ng isang operating system kung walang graphical server? Sa, B- sa Linux, ang tawag dyan is X. Madali tandaan. X. Okay? So, yun ang graphical server ng Linux. Next is the desktop environment. Or tiyatawag na Windows Manager. Ito yung, yung Microsoft Windows. No? Kasi yung window Manager. So, nakikita mo, nag-open ka ng folders, nag-open ka ng settings, nag-click ka dito, nag-drag ka dito, nag-save ka dyan. Okay? So, kung ano yung nakikita mo, no, yung tiyatawag na Graphical User Interface, or GUI, so, ang desktop environment is one of the pieces ng operating system. So, we, we got this... Uh, uh, pieces, like, the last one is the applications, no? Yun yung kailangan mong i-run. Yun yung, yun yung gagamitin mo, no? Yung mga applications, like, for example, uh, um, office applications, calculator, okay? okay? Mga reminder, mga no, uh, notes, no? Yung text editors, okay? Yung settings. So, yun yung mga applications na nag sa operating system. So, kanina, uh, natakil natin ang kernel. So, sabi ko nga, ang kernel is the Linux. Paano nangyari yun? The kernel is the one piece of the whole that is actually called Linux. Okay? So, hindi lang ang tawag sa Linux is the operating system, but actually, yan ang kernel. Okay, the kernel is the core of the system and manages the CPU, memory, and peripheral devices. The kernel is the lowest level of the operating system. Ah, okay. So, ang operating system pala, ang pinaka-brain or pinaka-heart niyan is the kernel. Bakit? Si kernel ang nakikipag-usap sa machine and sa other parts ng operating system using the shell. Okay? So, shell nag kay kernel. So, si kernel lahat, nasa kanya lahat ang connections. Okay? So, isipin mo na lang, siya yung pinaka-head o pinaka-hub. No? Hindi lang hub, siya yung head. So, siya ang nag-manage ng lahat. Si kernel. Okay? Hindi yan sundalo, no? Kernel. But, kernel. Okay? Hindi colonel. Kernel. So, tandaan mo, Ang kernel is yung Linux, actually. Mamaya, makapakita ko yung video ng history ng Linux. Madalaman mo kung bakit uh, Linux ang kernel. Okay? Pero, may tawag pa dun eh, sa operating system. Hindi tawag na GNU o GNU. Okay? So, papakita ko yun mamaya. So, uh, yung uh, kernel, actually, 
is ganito siya ini-illustrate. So nakita mo yung Linux kernel, yung red. So yan ang uh, minamanage ng isang kernel. So isa isang machine, okay, uh, may parts yan, like ito yung hardware mismo, and then yung sa labas, no? ito yung mga input-output uh, uh, peripherals or devices, and then yung hardware, and then the Linux mismo, and then yung applications na garan, or yung operating system. Okay? So yung mga software. Okay, so, for example, si user may gamit na keyboard and mouse, nag-input siya, click, 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 or type, 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 and then saan siya nagka-type? Sa isang hardware op operated machine, so either server computer or mainframe or a desktop or a mobile o yung mga nilalagay sa katawan, kung ano pa yan, mga high-tech gadgets and devices. So, uh, syempre, doon ka nahi communicate But, si Linux kernel ang nagmamanage niyan. Siya ang nagmamanage ng real-time computing or RTC na tatawag o yung mga <coughs> Linux security modules, yung device drivers, yung file system, saan mo siya kinukuha, anong kailangan mong resources para mag-run yan, iba yung mga software para bumili siya, kailangan meron kang uh, memory allocations, uh, meron kang network scheduler, yung mga network devices, or I mean network uh, um, um, networking tools, okay? So, networking uh, software, okay? Iba, iba pa. So, ibig sabihin, uh, para makommunicate mo ni user o ikaw yung yung software kailangan mo ng hardware at paano magagawa paano magcommunicate ni hardware dun sa software papunta sa user is using the Linux kernel. Okay, naintindihan mo? So, si kernel ang bahala sa iyo makapag-communicate sa software and the hardware. So, paano mo mapag-print? Kailangan mo ng printer, kailangan mo ng keyboard. Sabihin mo, kay, use, kay computer, na, okay, kailangan ko i-print to using a software or an interpreter. Okay? And then, si Linux ang magkasabi kay hardware na, okay, i-print mo yan. And then, papunta siya kay input-output devices. Okay? Kay uh, printer. Okay? So, that's how the Linux kernel works. So, we'll go to the open source philosophy. So, ano ba yung open source philosophy? Sinasabi nila ang open source is free. Free, di ba? Tama. Free yan. But, the, behind that, ano ba talaga ang open source? Yung free kasi, is an English term, di ba? Free. Hindi mo siya ma-define actually as free. If you understand correctly, free is walang bayad. Tama? So, it's referring to an object na kailangan mo bilhin. Pero dahil free, hindi mo siya kailangan bilhin. At makukuha mo siya. And after that, ano? Wala na. But, syempre, pag mo isang bagay, nasa iyo yun, free. You can use it. Kahit anong gusto mong gawin. Diba? Pero, bago mo bilhin isang, bago makuha isang bagay, actually, binibili mo siya. Sa ngayon, diba? But, for example, uh, meron ka dyang nakitang nahulog na uh, dahon. <laughs> Kaya magagawa mo sa dahon, okay? Uh, for example, prutas. So, kinuha mo siyang free, at kinain mo. Sabihin, malaya kang gawin yan. Okay? So, ipasok natin to sa ating uh, open source. So, uh, sa English is free, but actually, meron yan two Latin words. Sabihin na gratis and libre. Libre o libre. Okay? Ang gratis is binigay sa sa'yo ng walang bayad. Diba? Sabihin nga kaya may gratitude, diba? So, yung gratis is actually binigay sa sa'yo nang walang hard feelings. <laughs> walang kapalit. Gratis, nakuha mo siya. Nang wala kang binigay na kapalit. At meron din yung tiyatawag na libre. Ano ba yung libre? Hindi yun yung binabayad. O, oh, nakuha mo siya ng libre. But sa Latin, sabi yung libre is the freedom about it. Bahala ka lang kung saan gawin mo. Kung nakuha mo siya ng gratis, walang bayad, Ang libre naman is a freedom to use it. Kahit anong gusto mong gawin mo. Nasa sa'yo yan. So, yun ang libre. So, let's describe it. No? Illustrate natin sa ganitong bagay. Like a pizza. Oops, nagutom ka, no? <laughs> ako, mahilig talaga ako sa pizza. Okay? And gumagawa din ako ng pizza. 
Uh, so, meron kita ng free pizza and the free pizza recipe. Okay? So, ilagay natin sa ganyan lugar. So, ang free pizza, basta binigay ka ng pizza, gusto mo ba yun? <laughs> Kung gusto ko yun. Okay? Free pizza, hindi mo binayaran. Eh, minsan, sa kaibigan yan, di ba? So, okay. Free to. Hindi ko sa'yo, hindi ko bigay ta. So, hindi tawag na gratis. Wala kang binayad. And the free pizza recipe naman, binigay din sa'yo. O, ano ibig sabihin nun? Okay. Binigay ka ng pizza, bibigay ko sa'yo yung recipe. Ibig sabihin, hindi ko sa'yo yung paano ko siya ginawa. Okay? Ano mga kailangan ko sa pizza? So, that is libre. So, ang open source is nakuha mo siya ng libre at may kalayaan kang gawin yan ulit. At yung recipe na yan, pwede mo siyang baguhin. Alam mo pa, nagadap ka ng recipe online, walang bayad. At pwede mo siyang baguhin at ibenta ulit. Kung gusto mo. Pwede mo siyang ipost ulit. At bahala kang sumuyad. Pizza, lagay mo ng kamote. Diba? <laughs> pwede yun. Apples, diba? Lagay mo ng mata yung basil. Gusto mo mas maalat. Gusto mo maanghang. Okay? So, binigay sa'yo yung recipe, paano gawin, at pwede mo siyang i-modify. O pwede mo siyang tanggalan o idagdagdagan. So, sa so open source, libre mo lang kinuha, libre pang i-share, libre pang kainin, pwede mong baguhin, pwede mong tanggalan. That's the freedom. Yun yung philosophy ng open source. So, sa Linux, ang libre and gratis is a combination. Okay? So, ang Linux, sinare siya sa'yo, bahala ka nang gusto mong gawin dyan. It's your freedom. And it's not about the money, money, money. We don't need the money. Pero, kanta yan, di ba? But hindi siya ibig na libre is referring to wala kasing bayad. So, sisimula pa lang, sula na talagang bayad. Wala kang obligations sa Linux. Kapag kinuha mo. You can see the code. Okay? But, ang philosophy ng, ng, ng Linux is, or ng open source is about the rights to do something on it. Okay? So, freedom na meron kang right. Okay? Meron kang karapatan about sa uh, operating system na yan. Or any other applications na open source. Bahala ka kung gusto gawin mo. So, it's your right. Hindi yung sabihin na walang bayad. Okay? So, mamaya, differentiate natin. Yung tiyatawag na proprietary and the open source. So, i-apply natin to sa Linux, of course. So, sa Red Hat versus NOS. Okay? So, kung alam mo sa Red Hat, maybe you know, you know it na, na nagsasubscribe ko dyan. No? Na binabayaran mo yung subscription. But it is an open source. Oh, akala ko ba ang open source is libre? Okay? No. Of course, you can get Red Hat na libre. Pwede mo siyang i-download. So, bahala ka. Pwede mo, hindi mo sabihin na Red Hat, ay, may bayad dyan. Mahal yan eh. No? But, you can install it. You can download it and install. So, ang pinakahibaan niya sa CentOS. Si CentOS is libre talaga. Pwede mo siyang i-download, install. You can see the source code and same sa Red Hat. But, si Red Hat, meron siyang support na tinatawag kasi meron ibang software si Red Hat Uh, hindi tulad ng ibang distributions o ibang types of Linux. Okay? So, like, andyan si Ubuntu, hindi, hindi lahat ng nasa Red Hat ay nasa Ubuntu. Okay? So, isa silang operating system, isa silang Linux na operating system, but iba't iba ang flavor. Iba't iba ang software na nilagay dyan. So, si Red Hat, meron siyang subscription ay hindi niya pwedeng i-release yung mga updates niya sa iba. Kasi sila nga nag-develop noon, specially for uh, Red Hat. But, dahil under sila ng, operating, ng uh, open source uh, licensing and community, kailangan nilang i-release yung source code through CentOS. Si, source, si CentOS is actually the uh, open source or yung uh, community base para i-test, i-develop, uh, i-beta, no? parang gano'n, no? uh, ipakita yung source code sa lahat, community but not through Red Hat. Okay? But, uh, sa CentOS, kapag nirelease ni Red Hat yan, is bahala ka. Hindi ka pwedeng tumawag kay Red Hat na, uy, sira to, ayusin mo. No. 
magkasubscribe ka kay Red Hat, magkabayad ka kay Red Hat. Just kasi kumikita sa si Red Hat sa support. Okay? So, yan. Mamaya malalaman nyo later on kung ano sinasabi ko. So, ang major distribution sinatawag dahil ang Linux is an operating system, but madami lumabas. Ang akala ko ba madaming uh, ang Linux isa lang? But ang daming Linux. Sabi, yung Debian, Linux din. Ang ganito, Linux din. Gaya pa Linux, nakakalito. Ano mga kailangan kong gamitin? No, it's actually a distribution. So, depende sa type mo. Depende sa requirement mo. Depende sa kung sa kasanay. Okay? So, para pareha sila, but iba't iba ang function. Isang Linux lang sila, but iba't iba ang function. Okay? But, pwede mong gawin kung ano na kay Debian, kung ano na kay Ubuntu, kung ano na kay Red Hat. Pwede mong gawin din sa iba. But, iba't iba ang approach. Iba't iba ang software packaging, iba't iba ang commands, special commands, I mean, but ang commands nila is isa sa Linux lang, na? Okay. So, it's like a, a flavor of pizza. Iba't ibang flavors ng pizza. Kung may pepperoni, pero pizza pa rin sila. Tama. So, kung merong Hawaiian, okay, parang green chata sinasabi ko, no? <laughs> so, merong uh, tinatawag na combo, <laughs> ang gusto ko ko sa SNR, no? Masarap ang pizza doon. But, iba't iba ang flavors ng pizza, ibig sabihin, Mahilig ka sa pizza o mahilig ka sa Linux, gumagamit ng Linux, but iba ang type mo. Okay? Iba ang requirement mo. Asi, gusto ko ng uh, uh, mayroong security penetration. No? Ikitawag na Kali Linux. Uh, gusto ko si parang desktop. No? Medyo desktop kasi ang gusto kong gamitin. So, pwede kang mag Debian o pwede kang mag Susa or Ubuntu. Okay? Hindi, kasi hardcore kami. Ha, uh, gusto namin, uh, servers lang talaga. So, pwede ka mag-Ubuntu rin, pwede ka mag-Red Hat. Okay? So, for example, si Ubuntu is, uh, ginamit, gumawa si Ubuntu galing sa Debian. Uy, gusto ko ng Debian eh, pero gusto ko gumawa sa sarili kong uh, company. Okay? So, gumawa si Ubuntu. O, oh, yan, si CentOS, ganun din. Okay? So, si Susa, ganun din. Si Kali Linux, ganun din. Nag-base lang sila sa, sa ibang uh, distribution or mismo sa Linux. Kasi pwede kang mag-build ng sarili mong Linux if you're an expert. Okay, so sa ngayon, hindi kayo matuturo, no? Uh, it's far uh, way sa ating uh, uh, topics. And there is more. <laughs> Parang offer lang sa mga TV shows, no? Uh, hindi lang yan ang mga distribution. Nandyan ang mobile no, na computing. Android. Kilalang kilala mo ang Android. Siguro lahat ng, halos lahat ng tao mayroong Android. Maliba na lang dun sa mga uh, loyal sa kanilang mga distribution. Hindi ko sinasiraan. No? Nga, iba't iba ang ating requirement. Iba't iba ang ating uh, type. But sa Android, it's ruling the computing system. Ruling the uh, IT world. Okay? So, lalo na sa consumers. No? Because, bakit? Ah, may freedom ko eh. No? Hindi, wala kang freedom sa ibang operating system. But dito, dahil Linux built si Android, if you, kung hindi mo pa alam, uh, may freedom ka na gawin yan. No? Siya tawag na i-root mo, di ba? Yung mga Android devices, no? pwede mong hanapin yan sa Google lang. But, ang daming function ng Android. Very flexible. Okay? And, and dyan na si Chromebook. Si Chromebook, kung, kila, kung alam mo yan, ito yung laptop na gawa ni uh, uh, Google. Actually, si Android is from Google din. No? But yung Chromebook is yung parang laptop nila na uh, very light, very easy, very uh, uh, stylish. No? Manipis lang yan. At actually, usually, ginagamit siya sa uh, mga education. No? Sa schools, minsan, binibigyan nilang libre yan. Okay? Or very cheap lang kasi ang Chromebook. But, ang sabihin ko is running applications, mga open source software, hindi mo kailangan magbayad ng software. It's very light. No? Pwede mong i-customize ang operating system ang Linux na minimal lang ang kailangan ganyang gamitin. It's very specific lang. Yung mga uh, Google Google products lang. No? Google applications na ang nilaran dyan sa Chromebook. And also the Kindle. Ito yung gawa ni Amazon. Okay? So, Kindle is a, a, a book resource library, no? So, dyan kang nagbabasa ng mga books. Pwede ka rin mag-play ng games no? sa mga Kindle uh, tablets nila. But, if sabihin, pwede kang mainly, pwede kang magbasa ng books using Kindle so, ama, sa Amazon. And it's built, no? It's based on a Linux distribution din. So, uh, meron siyang special software dyan, meron siyang special 
applications na si uh, Amazon la ang ang may support. So actually hindi 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 libre naman, no? Hindi mo pwedeng i-crack. But since uh, no, I'm sorry na, um, hindi ko sinasabing crack, no. Pwede mo makita yung source code. Since ang Kindle is pwede mag-run sa uh, sa Android, okay? So pwede makita yung source code ibig sabihin. Okay? So, yan yung ating topic about sa um, open source. It's everywhere. Okay? So, halos lahat na nakita natin is everywhere. Okay? I'll show you a video uh, regarding the open source and what is Linux. Yun yung sabi kong history kanina. Hi, I'm Jonas. Do you know what open source is? Well, let me explain it for you. Basically, it means that the recipe of any given work is shared and free for anybody to use. Let me take you back where it all started. In the 1980s, a guy named Richard Stallman had a problem with the software in his printer. He could fix the printer himself, but unfortunately, he was not allowed to get inside the black box by the manufacturer. This frustration was the beginning of the free and open source movement. The essential benefits of open source are access to the source or recipe of any given work, free remix and redistribution of any given work, an end to predatory vendor lock-in, and a higher degree of cooperation. Open source is originally a software-related term, but let's take a non-technical example of where the open source mindset is actually used today. Here's Dave. He is a really passionate skateboarder. He loves the community because everyone shares tips and tricks openly. This means that everybody has access to the source of becoming a better skateboarder. Dave has the opportunity of remixing an existing trick and making it even better. He becomes more skilled, faster. If Dave's skateboard breaks, he doesn't necessarily have to go back to the vendor to get it fixed. He can also fix it himself with the help of one of his friends from the community. This is because the design of the skateboard is open source. In the skateboard community, you share new ideas and remix each other's tricks. You cooperate and reach much higher standards than any skateboarder could reach alone. Now let's take another example. Here's Susan and Michael. They have just bought a new property and now need a new house. John is an open source architect and offers three designs that Susan and Michael can base their dream house on. They choose option A because it best fits their needs. But Susan wants a conservatory as well, so Michael draws one and adds that as an extension to their chosen house design, option A. Susan and Michael choose company A to help build the house. It should be easy for company A to build it because the architectural drawings and guidelines are already produced by John, the open source architect. But during the process, Susan and Michael find out that Company A's employees are very slow and not very polite. They therefore get Company B to finish the work. It's easy for Company B to take over the project because everything is openly documented. Fortunately, Company B does an amazing job of completing the construction project. In the meantime, Coco and June have shared a new solar cell design as an extension to option A as well. Susan and Michael also decide to add that to their home. Susan and Michael are now happy owners of a beautiful and customized new home. But John is also happy. He can now add two new extensions to his professional portfolio without having done anything himself. So now I've given you a taste of some of the many benefits of open source. But before I leave you, I have to put an end to some of the myths that still exist. First, you have no control of your work. That's not true. As the initiator, John, the open source architect, verifies extensions and chooses what can be added to his specific project and therefore also decides where the project is heading. Second, open equals unsafe. Not true. In an open source project, many people are involved and cooperate to make an even safer product and to keep unauthorized people out. And third, everything is free. No, the source itself is free and publicly available, but the house must, for example, still be built, customized, maintained, and provided with water, power, and heat. Hopefully you can now better understand the positive term open source and the principles within. 
please start opening up and use the extreme beneficial principles the way they deserve. As mentioned, my name is Jonas, and I'm representing Bit Blueprint. We have, in collaboration with Moving Monday, made this video to help scale the positive principles within the open source paradigm. We have, of course, made this video free for everyone to use, modify, and share. So feel free to do that. Thanks for watching. Okay, you see the video, uh, even the video is an open source. Okay, so pretty much modify. That's why I shared the video. Yan. So it's free, no? Galin siya sa YouTube. Uh, so you understand na ang, ang, ang open source or ang Linux then is uh, uh, free to use. And uh, the, the guiding principle or the philosophy nito is uh, pwede siyang ma-modify. No? But yung principle niya na free, pwede mo siyang sell actually. But remember na meron ding free out there. So, you need to know the policies, you need to know the licensing. Kung ano bang sinasabi, pwede ba itong i-distribute ng free? O pwede ba itong uh, uh, i-resell na may consent ng uh, developer or ng source mo? Okay, so another video na ipapakita ko is yung uh, a little bit of history ng Linux para meron kang background. But you can, syempre, pwede mong i-search to sa Wikipedia or sa other searches sa Google. Our story begins 20 years ago. Boris Yeltsin was sworn into office. Jay Leno replaced Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. And cell phones were really, really big. It was August of 1991, and a 20-year-old computer science student named Linus Torvalds sat down at his computer in Helsinki to post what is now one of the most famous entries in computing history. Hello, everybody out there. I'm doing a free operating system, just a hobby. Won't be anything big and professional like GNU. It probably will never support anything other than AT hard disks, as that's all I have. Well, word of Linux open source project quickly spread around the globe, and developers from all over contributed their code. Linus named his OS kernel Linux and chose a penguin as its mascot after a little incident at the zoo. He soon made a very important decision that would shape Linux's future just as much as the technology. He chose the GPL license created by a visionary named Richard Stallman. The Linux kernel, along with the GPL license and other GNU components, revolutionized the computing industry with a few very simple yet very important freedoms. The freedom to use the software for any purpose the freedom to change the software to suit your needs, the freedom to share the software with your friends and neighbors, and the freedom to share the changes you make. These radical ideas fueled its spread around the world and somewhat paradoxically, its rise from a hobbyist experiment to the foundation of a large and thriving commercial ecosystem. Companies built businesses around Linux. In 1999, Red Hat's stock tripled as it became the first Linux company to go public. That same year, IBM spent a billion dollars to improve and advertise Linux. Does he have a name? His name is Linux. Soon, Linux was knocking out industry heavyweights and fueling the rise of the Internet with its free software. In short, Linux revolutionized computing. But whenever something is this disruptive, there's bound to be competitive crossfire. But Linux not only survived, it thrived. Today, the kernel development community numbers in the thousands, with hundreds of companies collaborating on Linux development. Every three months, another version of Linux is released. So, where is Linux today? Running in 75% of stock exchanges worldwide, and powering the servers that deliver Amazon, Facebook, Twitter, eBay, and Google. You use Linux literally every time you surf the internet. It's in your phone, in your TV, running 95% of supercomputers, and in many of the devices you use every day. Linux is everywhere. And the Helsinki-based programmer who started it all? He orchestrates this worldwide army of developers from his home office in Portland, Oregon, as a fellow at the Linux Foundation.
As we celebrate 20 years of Linux, we can all see ourselves in its story. Thank you for being a part of its first 20 years. Now, the video uh, was recorded, no? na post yan uh, six years ago. Now, it's uh, 2017, sa pinapa and it's still growing. You know? Ang Linux is very fast growing. So now you understand what is Linux and kung ano siya nagsimula, kung paano nagsimula. Let's move on. So the, the major application sa Linux is uh, comprises of iba't ibang klaseng applications, of course. So hindi lang isa ang applications, but very broad, no? Madaming klaseng applications ang nag-run sa Linux. Depende kung ano ang requirements. Depende kung ano ba ang hinahanap o ano ang dinidevelop ng isang tao. So, unahin natin ang desktop. Okay, sa desktop, ano makita sa desktop? Normally, nakita mo is an office application. Malamang, yun ang kinagamit mo. Paano gumawa ka ng document, paano kang mag-report, mag-present, mag-edit, no? So, kailangan mo ng, ng uh, office software. Like, sa desktop, andyan ang open office, andyan libre office, which is usually installed already kapag install mo ang isang Linux distribution. So, ang browser niya, yan ang Firefox, but you can also use Chromium. Okay? Ito, ang Chromium is an open source uh, uh, version ni Chrome. Okay? So, walang Chrome sa Linux, but Chromium. Okay? And, yan ang mga mail client like uh, Thunderbird. Okay? Kung meron kang uh, gusto mo ng uh, text editor, merong Emacs, uh, at madami pang iba. Okay? So, normally, ito yung makita mo sa desktop. Okay, so any pa, kahit ano pang like uh, Steam, no? kung gusto mong maglaro ng mga online games, meron dyang Steam at iba't ibang klaseng applications. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung normal mong ginagawa. Okay, ito yung uh, normal na ginagawa ng isang desktop no? na nag-run ng ganitong klaseng mga major applications. And uh, also, ang uh, majority ng ginagawa o ang gamit ng Linux is for the server. Okay? So, bakit? Uh, para magkaroon ng isang system, kailangan mo ng isang server. Okay? Server, ang role niya is siya ang uh, in-installan ng mga software para ma-serve niya ang iba't ibang klaseng client. Okay? Ang madaming client. So, pwedeng mag ng isang application sa bawat client, but hindi sila actually magko-communicate sa iba't ibang klaseng client. Kailangan mo ng server. At example ng server is sa Apache. Ito yung web server sa Linux or sa open source. Apache, ito yung ginagamit ni Facebook, ni Google, ni Twitter, iba't ibang klaseng makilala ang mga website. And of course, yung website din na ginagamit sa mga normal companies. And file server, andyan ang Samba, ang network file system, yung NFS, or yung database nila, yung MySQL. No? If you're familiar with this, ito yung mga applications na kadalasang in-install ang ginagamit sa Linux. And dyan din ang postfix. Ito yung uh, mail server, kung kailangan mo ng mail server. And then, meron din mga proxy server. Yung sa Linux, this is uh, Squid. Okay? So, madami pa. Ang dami pang pwedeng gamit na applications as server sa Linux. Next is a programming naman, no? I, kung ikaw yung programmer, alam mo mga bagay na to, like C, C++, Python, PHP, Perl, Java, Shell, no? yung Bash or yung SH, no? Uh, normally, ako yung ginagamit ko is Shell. So, I'm not a programmer, not a developer, but uh, I know some of the C++ and C uh, and Shell. <laughs> But, masabihin lang, yung mga applications na ito is pwede mong paganahin sa loob ng Linux. Actually, uh, in-encourage nga na mag-develop ka ng isang software application under Linux. Bakit? You have the freedom. Okay? At pwede mo siya ma-apply. You have a great opportunity to test your system, test your programs, yung uh, applications na develop mo uh, under Linux because it's very flexible and hindi siya proprietary. Wala kang babayanan. And, uh, andyan din ang mobile. No? So, kung may phone ka or, or yung mga tablets, no? meron yung tawag na SSH clients. No? Ito yung nakapag-communicate ng secure sa isang system. Andyan din ang mobile browsers. Kung meron kang Dolphin, meron kang Chrome, meron kang Firefox. No? Andyan ang uh, 
yun yung mga browsers na ginagamit ng mga mobile or mobile phones. And mag-install ka ng software, dyan ang Google Play Store. No? So, kung mag-install ka ng mga games, mga tools, mga office applications, so, kay Google Play Store ka pupunta. So, si Google Play Store is an application na nag-run sa mobile na nag-run sa Linux. Especially sa Android. No? And then, andyan din ang mga admin tools. No? Ito yung mga applications na kung saan uh, ginagamit ng mga administrator. Like AppGet, ito yung ginagamit sa Ubuntu para makapag-install, para makapag-uninstall or mag-modify ng isang package, no? isang software na kailangan mong ilagay, uh, extract, at install sa isang Linux operating system or distribution. Yum, ito yung mga ginagamit ni CentOS, ni Red Hat, no? lahat ng base sa Red Hat. Madaya pang klaseng distribution na base sa Red Hat. No? Dahil ko ang requirement nila is Red Hat base, no? So, gumagawa ang ibang, iba't ibang companies ng distribution na base sa Red Hat. So, yam yung ginagamit nila pag-install. And then, dun din ang uh, WebMean. So, kung gusto mo nang hindi lang puro... <coughs> hindi lang puro uh, mga commands, no? Pwede ka rin mag-administer na isang server or desktop using webmin and other GUI tools no ang dami mga GUI tools sa Linux at magaganda ang mga gamit nila magaganda ang mga uh, paano siya ginagamit magaganda ang uses i mean all right so those are the major applications may ibang kasing sub applications no and what if you can think you know pwede kang mag-run ng mga windows applications sa sa Linux like uh, using wine no so you can search pa para gumamit niyan but to give an idea ito yung mga major applications Now we go to the basic software licensing. So, sa Linux, merong licensing. But, na, hindi ibig sabihin may bayad, no? Ibig sabihin, makukulong ka, no? Mga licensing. But, it's very serious. Bakit? Uh, you need to follow uh, some rules. So, sa lahat ng bagay, may rules, no? Kung sa open source, it kailangan mo siyang share, no? Indeed, I mean, uh, ang rules niya is free mo siyang makukuha, pwede mo siyang ibigay, o pwede mo siyang share, pwede mo siyang modify, at share mo yung modify mo. Okay? So, pag gumagawa ka ng isang open source applications, lalo na sa Linux operating system, uh, kailangan mong may software licensing. So, it, there are two good guys, uh, main na, uh, actually, no, sa licensing. Andiyan yung FSF and the OSI. So, FSF, uh, ito yung uh, mga uh, sinimula ni Richard Stallman, uh, which is, they want everything to be free. So, parang rev revolt, no? Rev revolution doon sa mga proprietary softwares o yung mga trial, 70 trial, din sunod meron ka ng bayad, no? So, like, kasi yung panahon na yun, no? Uh, uh, kanina, yung sa pinunod mong video, uh, para, para makuha mo yung software na yun, makuha mo yung source code, kailangan magbayad ka. Okay? Uh, but here, gusto nila is free yung software, wala nang proprietary, wala nang uh, support-support, Uh, actually, no. Actually, you can get support, but pwede mo siyang makuha ng libre. No? Wala. Wala dapat ibang commitment. No proprietary. So, very strict sila doon. Okay? And then, and then naman ang OSI. No? Open Source Initiative. No? Ito naman yung mga group of uh, companies naman to na uh, uh, binuha nila to at they're very passionate and practical kung anong magiging open source. So, alam mo yung basic understanding ng open source And under that, uh, mga licenses like GPL, GPL3, LGPL, MIT, BSD, and more. Okay? So, uh, medyo nakakalito no, kung isipin ang FSF and OSI because ng, ang main goal nila, main function nila is to make the software free and you have a freedom to do about it. Okay? But these two good guys, no, ito yung uh, licensing na to, kailangan mong malaman uh, Uh, ito, may mga rules sila, may mga guidelines sila, paano ka magpa-license, no? Nag-develop na, uh, para ma, para ma-i-publish mo siya sa community, so um, uh, encourage sila na gumawa, mag-develop ka ng software and then i-base mo sa community. Why? Gaya nga kanina sa video, is para ma-improve, para ma-secure, and marami makaalam. Marami mag-interest, and the credit is yours, okay? Of course, because it's an uh, open source. So, uh, Uh, dahil kung gusto mong i-share sa isang company, 
kailangan maging may reputation naman yung uh, dinevelop mo. So, uh, pipili ka. So, kung FSF or OSI and under that, yung mga licenses like GPL3, LGPL, MIT, BSD, okay? So, it's yours. Now, pwede mong puntahan yung website nila sa FSF and din sa OSI initiative. Okay? So, yung open source, ang fina-follow nilang key or philosophy, so yung guidelines nila is ito mga to. It's a freedom to run the program, like in sa video kanina, for any purpose. And the freedom to study how the program works. Bakit makita mo yung source code, di ba? And change it to make it uh, to make it do what you wish. Okay, pwede mo siyang mag-win. Like, uh, ayaw mo nang menu na ito, ayaw mo nang uh, sinasabi ng software na ito, pwede mo siyang i-change, no? i-modify. And the freedom to redistribute copies so that you can help your neighbor. Like, for example, uh, Wi-Fi security sa kapitbahay mo. So, kinuha mo yung uh, router niya, meron kang minodify, and then binitik mo sa kanya, senior mo sa kanya. Okay, para matulungan mo rin siya, depende sa pangailangan. And the freedom to distribute copies of your modified versions to others. So, hindi lang sa'yo, pwede mo siyang ipakita sa iba. So, ma-appreciate nila at mag-roll din yung uh, uh, dinevelop mo, makilala, at uh, mag-benefit din yung ibang tao. No? Uh, so, yun yun. And uh, yun nga, ang reversionalize uh, ni uh, Richard Stallman ang mga bagay na ito. So, uh, actually, we should give the credit to Richard Stallman, which is the founder then ng GNU. No? So, uh, na-found out nila na kailangan nila ng isang kernel, which is gawa ni Linus, uh, Linus Torvald. So, uh, pinasok nila si Linux dun sa GNU, GNU project. So, actually, ang operating system is GNU and the kernel is the Linux. Okay? So, pwede mo siyang GNU Linux or Linux GNU. So, kailangan mong i-respect uh, yung GNU. Pero kasi, nasanay ng tao sa Linux lang. But actually, it's GNU. Okay? Or GNU. We should give the credit to Richard Stallman. So, now, uh, install natin ang virtual box. So, I know you're excited ano ba ang Linux, paano ba gamitin yan but um, kung wala ka namang hardware dyan, kung wala kang laptop na spare or server na pag installan and I encourage you to use virtual box. You can use other like VMware a workstation or player but for this training, matuturo ko sa inyo paano mag-install ng virtual box at kung ano ba yung virtual box. So, uh, oh, pag-usapan natin what is virtual box, uh, advantages and disadvantages, how to install and set, set up virtual box, and let's see it hand in hand. So, papakita ko sa inyo. And ang website niya sa baba is uh, www.virtualbox.org. You can visit that. Papakita ko rin sa inyo. So, what is virtual box? Okay, kung may idea kayo huh, sa virtualization, that's good. Um, virtual box is one of the virtual virtualization platform uh, to simulate no, or to uh, um, utilize the resources, share the resources ng existing computer mo. May it be a, a laptop or a desktop or yung server mo. Okay? So basically, it is an open source virtualization software that runs virtual machines currently now no, owned by Oracle. Okay, so ang ginagawa lang niya is yung nag-run siya ng virtual machines na uh, it's like a computer or a server inside your computer. So, so what, what's a virtual machine? It is a completely separate individual operating system installation on your usual operating system or ibig sabihin na, na, yun meron kang current na OS and then uh, gumagawa siya ng separate lang na individual OS sorry it is implemented by software emulation and hardware virtualization just like Oracle virtual box so isipin mo meron kang server or computer inside your computer anong disadvantage ang advantage and disadvantage using a virtualization software or uh, ito nga sa virtual box. So, ang, ang cons niya, because uh, uh, you cannot use some of the built-in peripherals. Okay? So, 
unay natin, no? uh, kapag meron ka mga ibang external devices, uh, hindi mo lahat magagamit talaga yan. Okay? Uh, performance niya, since yung hardware mo is uh, sinishare lang niya, okay? so kung madami kang virtual machine, kung mababa naman ng machine mo, ang computer mo, is, uh, syempre, babagal din yung performance. Kasi kumukuha lang naman siya ng resources doon sa iyong physical machine. At ang pros naman yan, no, kagandahan, is mas mura. Okay? Uh, hindi mo na kailangan uh, magbumili pa ng separate machine para lang maran mo ang isang service like Apache. Okay? Uh, like, um, gusto mo ng another email server or meron kang game server. Okay? I, hindi mo na kailangan bumili nun. Uh, kailangan lang, meron ka lang isang powerful machine. Siyempre, dapat mataas ang specs or i-upgrade mo yung current machine mo and then mag-build ka ng iba't ibang instances. Okay? Iba't ibang virtual machine. And then install mo ng individual operating system. Okay? So, yun yung ating uh, kagandahan ang gagamitin natin. And it's easier to, ma to manage. Bakit? Wala ka ng hardware na kailangan manage. Kung suman ng palibagong machine, hindi mo na siya dadagan ng physical memory. Hindi ka na dadagan ng physical hard drive. Okay? So, lahat ng resources mo, isi-share niya, ahati-hati niya, i-assign mo lang kung gano'ng kataas. Uh, since VM is a file, so madali siyang i-backup, kakapi and paste mo lang. Mamigrate mo, hindi gusto mo i-modify yung specs. So, ganun siya kadali. Ah, hindi ka naman stress na. So, eh, bumabagal yung performance. Okay, dagdagan natin ng, ng uh, resources yan. Okay, so, yan ang advantage and disadvantage using virtual box. It's very flexible and scalable. Bakit? Pwede mo siyang dagdagan, pwede siyang bawasan, pwede mo siyang ilipat, pwede mo siyang i-copy lang. Okay, gusto mo siyang shutdown, mabilis. Gusto mo siyang ilagay sa kabila, mabilis lang yan. So, yan kagandahan ng virtual box. Now, let's go to installation ng virtual box sa Windows. First, kailangan natin syempre i-download ang virtual box. Puntahan natin yung website na www.virtualbox.org. Okay, so pagpunta ka sa website nila and then download natin and install natin. Okay, so I'll show you uh, saan tayo mag-download. So, open your browser and go to uh, virtualbox.org. And then, so, sa main, main page pa lang nila, andito na yung download. Okay? So, we don't have time na basahin, basahin nyo na ngayon. Uh, you can read it for documentation and other screenshot kung gusto mong uh, may supporting document. So, let's click the download virtual box 5.1. And then, we'll go to dito, no? Sa anong platform siya. Ang current version niya is 5.1.1. 22. Okay? And, download natin to sa Windows host. So, kung meron kang ibang host dyan, kung naka-Mac ka, OS X, uh, pwede mo siyang install, no? Or, meron kang current Linux distribution, or Solaris, ang gamit mo, dito mo siya ipiliin. Since, ang aking uh, machine is Windows host, so, i-click ko lang yan, and then, the download will start. So, ang size niya is uh, 118 MB. Okay? So, malit lang yan and then we will install that later on. Okay, so um, I have here yung downloaded na virtual box installer. Uh, we just have to click that and run natin ang ating installer. Okay. So, madali lang siya mag-install. Next. 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 And yes. So, install. So, ganun siya kadali. Na wala nang ibang kailangan i-set up. Uh, uh, mabilis lang mo siya install since uh, ang resources ko is meron akong 4 gig na RAM at ang CPU ko is i3 so medyo mabilis naman to so it depends no kung mas mabilis ang, ang gamit ng machine uh, mas mabilis ang installation so mag magtatanong to sa on the first time this is not the first time na install sa aking PC 
Pero sa first time niyan, meron diyang interface na permission. So, iraran mo lang siya, i-allow mo lang siya dahil mag uh, set up siya ng virtual interface doon sa nick mo no sa iyong uh, network interface card. So, um kakaroon ka ng panibagong uh, network interface which is sa virtual box. So, after installation, uh, so, leave it na check na para ma-open na natin yung ating virtual box. Click finish. And then, dapat din ito ang ating makikita. Okay, so, sa so first time mo siyang bubuksan, ito, this, is, this uh, part is blank. No? Since dito is madami na ako na-install, madami na ako na-set up na uh, virtual machines, no? mga demo ko yan, uh, makikita mo siya dito. Meron akong CentOS, meron akong SUSE, meron akong Ubuntu, then other CentOS, and uh, Manjaro. Okay? So, I like Manjaro, no? Itong distribution na to. Uh, well, gusto ko lang siya for desktop. <laughs> so, uh, so, yan. Madali lang mag-setup ng virtual box. So, let's install Linux using an image for virtual box. Okay? Uh, bakit ganun ating simula? No? So, dahil uh, yung ating installation from scratch is for the next uh, week. No? Yung next uh, day or ating training. Okay? So, pwede yung puntahan yung next video uh, for inst installing Linux from scratch. Okay? I mean, from DVD or from ISO. This one, gagamitin natin ng image. Okay? Um, knowing assuming na meron ka nang na-download na image. Okay? Yung .ova or .ovf. Okay? <clears throat> um, kailangan natin para ma-install ma natin siya using an image is an OVA file or OVF file. So, para mas madali, install an OVA file o yung Open Virtualization Appliance. So, ang ginagawa nito, ibig sabihin, meron ka ng machine na na-install na, na set up na kung ano niya, proxy server or uh, uh, blank lang yan na operating system, basta installed na siya as machine. Parang pinasok mo na lang yung buong desktop mo sa computer mo. Pinasok mo yung buong server sa computer mo, okay? So, para siyang hard drive na sinaksak mo sa ibang computer. Okay? And pangalawa, pwede mo siyang guma pwede gumamit ng ISO, okay? Or DVD or USB na installer. So, ito yung common na ginagamit. No? Nag-download ka ng ISO from a website and then i-install mo siya. So, in this instance, nagagamit muna tayo ng OVA. Okay? So, puntahan natin ang uh, OVA. No? So, let's copy this link. Copy natin ito. Then... Go to the browser, then we run natin dyan. So, itong link na to, no, this is not a, uh, yung official, no, but madaming magagandang sources dito for OVA, no. So, gusto mag-practice ng mga other machines, pwede mo siyang explore, mag-download ka lang dito ng iba't ibang klaseng OVA, okay? So, uh, we will go to files. And then, andito na ang ibang klaseng uh, open source na OVA. So, let's go to Linux. And then, so, pwede kang pumili dyan. Uh, kaya rin, sent OS. Okay? Uh, download tayo ng sent OS. So, nandito siya, no? Ito yung mga sizes niya. May 400 MB. Meron, meron 4 gig. 1.4 gig bakit this is one this one is a GUI so merong minimal si CentOS meron din siyang GUI okay so depende uh ito yung mga version so minimal ibig sabihin uh, wala siyang GUI no uh, pure uh, black screen lang siya no? pure naka console lang 
Okay, Mama, later on malalaman mo yung concert sa ating ibang training videos. Okay, so bumili ka lang diyan, maganda mag-start ka sa GUI, no? So dahil ang ating lesson is merong navigation sa buong uh, system, so buong operating system. So you can explore uh, and install this and then install natin dun sa VirtualBox. Okay, download mo yan ang OVA. Since ako meron na akong ready na OVA sa aking last na pag-install, yun ang ating gagamitin for the demo. Okay? So, remember, kapag uh, na-download mo yan, uh, ito ang iyong root password. Okay? Root account. Ito yung root password. Ang username is root. And the username ng user naman is user. And then, yung password is nimda. Okay? So, yan yun. Ang um, uh, account mo to uh, log in sa mga yan. Okay? So, yan. Pupunta ka lang sa link na yun. Um, then, pwede ka na mag-download ng OVA. And next naman, using the DistroWatch. Okay? So, sa DistroWatch, um, ito ang source ng iba't ibang klaseng uh, distribution ng Linux. So, you can explore this. Makikita mo ito kung gano'ng kadami ang um, distribution. Nakita mo itong part na ito sa kanan. So, ranking lang to but you can show all, no? You can show all dito, no? So, more statistics. So, ang dami niyan. Pero makita mo yung top. So, ano ang top distribution? Okay? Hindi ibig sabihin ito na ito ang sobrang ganda, no? Ito lang yung uh, rating uh, na mas madami ang nag-download at madami mas madami gumagamit. Okay? Um, Tinan mo yung Manjaro dahil gusto ko siya, no? So, top 3 na siya. Nalampasan niya na si Ubuntu and si CentOS, nandito siya. Okay? So, um, madami nag-explore sa Mint, madami din nag-explore sa Debian. Okay? So, malalaman mo yan later on kung bakit, no? Kung nag-explore ka na sa Linux distribution. So, so for example, yun tayo sa Manjaro. Click mo yung Manjaro. And then, makita mo dito ang source. Ito yung mga details, no? Anong OS type niya, Linux? Based siya sa Arc Linux. Okay? And origin niya, Austria, architecture niya, pwede may support na uh, uh, 686 and the 64-bit, no? Ito yung 86-bit uh, and 64-bit. Uh, 32-bit, I mean, and 64-bit. And sa desktop niya, iba't ibang klaseng supported na desktop manager. You will know that later on sa ating mga susunod na video. So, gusto ko lang puntahan ito yung uh, 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 download link. No? Dito sa baba, ito yung mga ISO. Okay? Dito tayo sa stable release, which is latest siya na 5.17. So, puna tayo dyan, click natin yan, and pupunta tayo sa source forge. Ito yung, mga, ito yung source mismo ng mga open source software. So, nandito din yung release. So, click natin to. And then, hindi natin yung latest. 17.0.1 Pili ka ng uh, uh, desktop manager. Uh, para sa akin, maganda ang XFCE. Why? It is very light, simple, and maganda. No? Pero, pwede kang pumili. No? Nasa yan, in KDE, uh, later on, madalaman mo yan. Kung ano sabihin ng KDE, GNOME, XFCE, okay? kung ano yung mga yan. But, those are desktop uh, uh, those are desktop managers okay so like click mo yung xfce and then uh, download mo yung iso okay so makita mo ito kung ano madalas na din ang download like this merong download so ito lang click mo and then it will download your iso so ganun lang kadali no puntahan mo lang yung uh, um DistroWatch, and then nilid ka niya doon sa mga distribution na gusto mo. Okay. Uh, o nga pala, meron din ditong direct para sa torrent. No? Kung gusto mo mag-download through torrent. Okay. I mean, uh, okay. Ito sa website nila. Click mo lang yung kanilang website. Dito. Okay? Or, dito sa mirrors. Okay? 
Okay, for example, uh, type sa mirrors. So, andito rin yung mga link kung saan mo da-download. Okay? Ayan. Okay? So, for example, gusto mong torrent uh, para mas mabilis, pwede mo siyang ma-download nito. So, any distribution, meron naman siyang um, uh, torrent na download, download link. So, it will be easier for you. So, let's install Linux from an image. Okay? Uh, minimize ko to, and then we'll go here and mag-install tayo. Papano? If you have OVA file, na-download mo na, go to file, and then import um, appliance. Okay? Import natin, uh, browse natin yung mga files, kung saan meron tayong import. Okay, so, meron ako itong CentOS na OVA. So, click mo lang yan, then open. Okay? So, yun ang import natin, and then click next. And then, lagay natin kung anong name. So, baguhin dahil ako, meron ako iba dito. So, pwede, CentOS A ang name yan. Uh, and then, click import. So, ganun kadali. Makita mo ito kung anong klase siyang Operating system, this is a Red Hat based operating system, ito yung kanyang spec, CPU 1, RAM, 1 gig, at may mga iba't iba pa akong mga uh, ibang details. Okay, just click import, and i-import nyo na yung uh, OVA file as a virtual machine. Okay, so uh, it depends on the speed ng computer mo, ng PC mo. Uh, import nyo yan. So, let's wait. Okay, so meron na tayo itong CentOS underscore A at 9s. Actually, hindi siya install, no? So, ating in-import lang ang OVA na yan. So, paano siya i-run? Click mo lang yung start. And then, yung ating machine ay magsa-start na. Ang pag-start pag dito, it's just like ordinary server na makikita mo, ordinary desktop ang kanyang startup. Pinakaiba lang, galing siya sa Oracle uh, Virtual Box. Okay, so my Linux machine is now starting. So, kung mabilis yung, uh, yung hard drive, I mean, ang hardware mo, kung tinaasan mo yung specs nito, is mas mabilis ang kanyang startup. So, maging, walang magiging problem at matatagalan. No? Sa akin, uh, mababa lang ang akin nilagay since I have only 4GB uh, uh, na memory. But, kung mas mataas ang memory mo, 
increase mo ang RAM advice para mas mabilis ang iyong installation, ang import, ang paggalaw sa loob ng Linux machine mo. So, uh, sa ating uh, practice, sa ating laboratory, uh, I encourage you to install or to download CentOS 7 dahil ito ang ating uh, uh, practice na operating system since this is a common and uh, maganda siyang ginagamit sa mga company for the server. Okay, so, okay, there, meron na akong uh, installed, meron na akong na-run na Linux machine which is CentOS and then pwede na akong mag-login sa acting machine. Okay, and then ang aking machine ay naka-up na. So, kung meron kang downloaded na OVA, madali na siya, no? Hindi mo na kailangan mag-setup, magpumunta doon sa mga uh, installation methods. But again, it depends na kung anong klaseng installation ang gusto mo. But here, uh, ito yung pag-import ng virtual machine. So, sa next ating uh, uh, video is tuturo ko sa inyo paano mag-install from scratch, from ISO, and then installation procedures, uh, and then we will go from here again. Okay? So, shut down ko muna ang aking uh, machine. Ganon siya kadali. Just click here, power off, and then okay. No worries kung ano man ang mga files dyan since it's a demo server. Okay, so uh, uh, you have learned, wrap up natin, uh, that Linux is basically free, uh, practically free. It's an open source at uh, pwede mong gawin kung ano gusto mong gawin after mo siya ma-install. Uh, pwede mo siyang i-modify or uh, ipamigay, pwede rin. And Linux is everywhere. Okay? Um, sa mga factories, sa mga uh, manufacturing, sa school, minsan hawak mo. Okay? And pag nag sa internet, uh, you're using Linux. And Linux is flexible. Very flexible. At uh, pwede mong paglaruan. Pwede mong set up kung ano-ano. Depende sa requirements. Okay? So, uh, encourage ko na uh, download mo yung virtual box. Mag-download ka ng uh, OVA. Or, uh, mag-install ka from scratch. Pwede rin. Download mo yung ISO para sa ating next training is ready Kana. So, explore mo lang yan at uh, para matuto ka. Okay? VirtualBox is awesome, right? So, Linux is awesome under the VirtualBox. See you next training.